In this next section for 2.5, we're going to be taking a look at pumping problems, where we have some kind of tank that's filled partway with water, and we want to find out how much work it's going to require in order to pump out all of the water in the tank. So for example four, we're looking at a 10 meter tall cylindrical tank oriented vertically. It's got radius three meters. It's filled with water up to the six meter mark. How much work is required to pump out all of the water? And we should use the fact that the weight density of water on earth is 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. So first we want to draw a picture of the situation. So we have a 10 meter tall cylindrical tank oriented vertically. So if we attempt to draw this, oops. If we attempt to draw this, we uh, have the top of the tank and let's draw the sides and then the bottom. Cool. And then uh, we're told that it has radius three meters and that it has height 10 meters. Uh, and it is filled with water up to the six meter mark. Cool. So we've got our setup here and we want to know how much work is required to pump out all of the water. So in order to think about this setup here, we know that work in general is force times distance. And if we have variable force or variable distance, then we need to kind of think about setting up an integral in order to actually do the computation. So here I note that maybe uh, if I were to sort of slice the water here into thin kind of cross-sectional slices again, these cross-sections are going to be perpendicular to what we're thinking of as maybe the, the vertical axis here. I'm not going to give it a letter yet because we're going to call it something slightly different than, than what you might expect. Um, but if we sort of form these cross-sectional slices, then each one is going to have roughly the same weight because it will be the same cross-section, just translated up or down a little bit. It'll have the same amount of water. However, each one will be required to be transported a different distance in order to get from where it is to outside of the actual tank. We're essentially going to be computing here the work that's required to take a tiny slice of this water and just bring it up just enough to the top of the tank so that we can then uh, let it fall off to the side somewhere, however, whatever system we're using to, to empty out this tank. So let's go ahead and draw a little slice of water and sort of think about uh, what, what exactly that requires us to do here. So if I pick, uh, let's see, my little, my little slice of water here, I'm going to call it's uh, kind of the depth of this water, dx. This is the thing that I want to think about as being thin. Because what I want to do here is I want to assume that all of this water is being transported about the same distance in order to compute the work required to move this thin slice of water up to the top of the cylinder here. So I've got my, my thin slice of water. It would be nice to figure out, I need to figure out kind of uh, two things. I need to first figure out what is the weight of this water, or what is the force due to gravity on this water. Uh, so let's see. So force due to gravity of the thin slice of water. Well, we're told that the weight density of water on Earth is 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. So if I find out the volume of this slice, then I can multiply that by 9,800 in order to give me the weight. So first goal is to find the volume of the slice. And in finding out the volume of this slice, well, I know this is a cylinder. It has uh, height dx and it has uh, the surface area of the base of this cylinder is gonna be pi times the radius squared. Well, the radius of this cylinder is always three. So uh, the volume of this slice is going to be pi times three squared dx, i.e. nine pi dx. 
Great. So that tells me then that the force due to gravity, I guess we can call that uh, force due to gravity, is equal to 9800. Oof. 9800 times that 9 pi dx. Cool. So that's the force due to gravity. The other thing that we need to do is think about how far are we moving it. We know that work is force times distance. So we also need to think about that the distance slice needs to be transported. In order to answer this question, we need to give ourselves a frame of reference. We need to think about applying some kind of numbers to this situation here. And frequently, it makes sense to take a look at uh, setting. We need, we need to basically give some x values to some different uh, quantities here. And what I want to think about here is I want to think about my x-axis being positioned vertically here, kind of passing through the center of the tank, or you could think about it passing off to the side of the tank. It's not super important, but what I want to do is I want to set up my x-axis here, and I want to, I can, I can make zero on my x-axis be wherever I like, but it's nice to, to have it be somewhere convenient. So I'm going to place x equals zero here, lining up with the top of the tank. The top of the tank is where I'm trying to go, and what I want to do is I want to make uh, kind of the, the positive x values go down here. So the x-axis is oriented so that uh, essentially x represents the number of meters that I am below the top of the tank. So with this uh, x value in mind, what I want to do is I want to think about, when I'm thinking about the distance that this slice needs to be transported, well, it needs to be transported from wherever it is up to this point x equals zero. And the idea is that, well, if we're looking at the slice with position x, if we're looking at the slice which is uh, x meters below the top of the tank, well, then we need to transport this uh, slice x total meters. So the work done on each slice is going to be the force times the distance. So uh, since we know that this is going to be a constant force, the weight of the water doesn't change, and the distance that it needs to be transported is, is a given quantity, it's x. So the work done on each slice is going to be 9800 times 9 pi times x dx. In order to get the total work then, what we need to do is we need to add up all of the works done on the slices, which is integrate that function. So I need to integrate here. Now in order to, uh, let's see, so we're integrating this 9800 times 9 pi x dx. In order to do a reasonable integral here, we want to think about, uh, well, what's the smallest x value that I have for my water? And I know that the smallest x value here is uh, x equals 4. So since I am going from uh, 4 meters uh, from the top, corresponding to the fact that this is uh, 6 meters, maybe I'll, I'll draw that out here. If the uh, tank is filled six meters full, there are four meters left before the top of the tank. So my smallest x value is four. My largest x value then is 10, since my largest x value corresponds to the water at the bottom of the tank here. And so I need to do this integral from x equals four to x equals 10. All right, so actually doing this computation then, this is an easy integral to do once we realize that the 9800 and the nine pi are constants. The x integrates to x squared over 2, and I'm evaluating from 4 to 10. If you take the time to plug this into your calculator, you're going to get approximately, uh, looks like 
1 6 times 10 to the 7, which we can think about as 1 1 6, uh, followed by what, five zeros? Three, four, uh, no, I think that's six zeros. Yeah, or yeah, that many zeros. Um, is that one point? All right, we're gonna we're gonna just write this out. One point one six times ten to the seven, so I don't have to count zeros right now. Uh, and this is let's see, we our units here are uh, this ninety eight hundred is in newtons per cubic meter. Uh, this nine pi it was. 9 pi dx was our cubic meters, and x was another meter, so this is going to give me newton meters, which is joules, which is the usual unit of work that we that we uh, use. So we have a lot of joules of work here, but uh, we were able to compute the amount of work that we would need and the amount of energy that it would take to empty out this tank. All right, we're going to uh, do another slightly more complicated pumping problem in the next video.